and welcome to the Haverhill Journal, where we take a quick look at what's happening in our city. I'm Lindsay Paris, and this week, local talent is taking center stage as superstars from around the region shine bright at Haverhill Idol, Possible Dreams, and definitely here in our first segment, where the superstar spirit is on full display in the Pentucket Players rehearsal space. For 24 years, the Pentucket Players have been entertaining the Merrimack Valley with their full-scale theatrical productions. Musicals, comedies, dramas, the group does it all with panache, with an air of professionalism that matches any Broadway performance. As we saw when we stepped behind the scenes at the latest rehearsal for their upcoming show, Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> Colleen Kelly, and I'm playing Mary Magdalene. My name is Tedros Amanis, and I'm playing Judas Iscariot. I played the role of Pontius Pilate, and I did uh, seven years ago in our production with Pentucket Players, and I feel privileged to play this role. Pentucket Players was started because I was directing a lot I was doing a lot of freelance directing in Eastern Mass, uh, Southern New Hampshire area, and there was no community theater in Haverhill. And a woman that worked with me, Judy Fulgioni, said, you know, we should really try to do something in Haverhill, and that's where I'm from. So I said, great. So we uh, started Pentucket Players. They've been around for 24 years, and I've been here for 23. Yes, so I've done a lot of shows. This is our second production of Jesus Christ Superstar. It is the iconic rock musical of the 70s. You know, once you can learn those melodies and hear those melodies, they come back instantly. We took the approach of Jesus and Mary as being lovers. Mm -hmm. um, they have a close relationship. Um, pretty much he tells her everything. It's very sensual on stage. It's almost like bringing the humanity into Jesus because everybody sees him as the godly Jesus and forget to see that he was human on earth and had those human emotions and I think Mary Magdalene kind of brings that out in him. Judas is the betrayer of Jesus Christ. Um, the interesting thing about Judas is that he doesn't really show up in the Bible until the week that Judas dies, that Jesus is crucified, and then he kills himself, so he's gone. So there's very little known about him, so it's kind of fun because it's up to the actor and the director and everyone as to how it's going to be played. I love the show, I love the message of the show. It portrays Jesus of Nazareth as a very human character, and all those around him, Judas and the Apostles, and it's, it's a show that makes you think. This show is huge. Um, Superstar is one of my favorite shows. This is my third or fourth time visiting the production, so I'm very familiar with it. As a costume designer, I am responsible for looking at the show, uh, reading through the script. I work with the director. We decide what every character is going to wear in every scene. Uh, I have to be responsible for making sure those things fit uh, and that they work together. It's not just about what you're wearing and you look good. You have to look good next to somebody else who looks good um, and that it fits every scene. So I'm making a bunch of costumes brand new for this show. Even though we have lots of stuff to choose from, believe it or not, I've made um, dozens of pieces just for this show, specific to this production. Allison, Captain, Captain, Jillian, and Dave. Here we go. So I first joined Pentecost Players in 2016. They've been very welcoming, and I've formed a lot of great friendships. I didn't do my first show until I was 30, and that was with the Garrick players and Lawrence. So I think that if you think you can perform um, and you think you can sing, you should come and audition. There's so much for people to do on stage, backstage. Everyone, because it's community theater, is helping each other out. It's a great, it's almost like a family. So much 
much talent in this play. I can't even express how much talent is in this play. It blew me away, um, probably more so than in the past that I've seen. And the people are working so hard and there's so much passion and I think the audience is really gonna see the emotion. I'm from Worcester, so I travel an hour for rehearsals. Um, in addition to being the costume designer, I was the scenic artist for the last show, and I'm painting the set for this show. So I'm not just in charge of finding costumes, I also have to make sure the set looks good. So obviously if I'm traveling an hour twice a week, sometimes three or four <laughs> times a week, um, I'm having a blast. We would be thrilled to see every person in the greater Merrimack Valley area come to Jesus Christ Superstar and support community theater in our area. And hopefully you guys will come down and check it out because I think you will love it. Pantacket Players presents Jesus Christ Superstar, April 13th, 14th, and 15th, with four performances at Haverhill City Hall Auditorium. More information and online ticket sales are available at pantacketplayers.org. Attention, all aspiring singers between the ages of 8 and 18. Come try out for the chance to become the next Haverhill Idol. The popular singing competition based on the American Idol TV show is back, and auditions are being held at HC Media Studio 101. All the Haverhill Idol festivities are run by HC Media's own Sarah Blackstone, and today she's going to give us the inside scoop on what to expect. What is Haverhill's super fun singing extravaganza that all the kids audition for every year? Why, it's Haverhill Idol, of course! In order to get the scoop to find out what it's like participating in Haverhill Idol, I am speaking to Emily Ferriso. That name might sound familiar to you because she was a winner for Senior Idol as well as a Haverhill Idol judge. So I'm speaking to her via Skype because she's actually away at UMass Lowell studying music. So hey Emily! Hey, how's it going? Tell me all about the experience that you've had participating in Haverhill Idol. One of my music teachers actually told me about it and I've been singing my whole life and I I just figured like, oh, it might be kind of a cool thing to try. It was a good time. So was it true that you actually lost first time trying for Havel Idol? Yep. Yeah. Well, it was my first time ever participating in a competition like that. So I was so nervous and I messed up so badly. Like I had practiced my song so much and then I just completely lost it when I went on stage. So I, I was really embarrassed myself just because I wasn't upset about not winning or anything, but I wish I had done better that time. And I took a year off just because I figured like I wanted to better myself a little bit and like keep working on it before I performed again. So I came back two years later just to try it. I was lucky enough to win. It was just a blessing. It was a big one. Haverhill Idol definitely impacted my life. It it gave me it gave me the strength and the courage to never give up because I so badly wanted to give up the first time I did Haverhill Idol and I didn't do as well as I had hoped. But then I just went back into it. Everybody was so supportive and it really, really reminded me that like you should never ever quit at what you're doing. Always keep trying and I miss it. <laughs> I miss getting to, I'm, I'm sad that I'm too old to participate in it now because it was such a fun experience. Well, Havel Idol definitely misses you. You are very talented and we're so thankful that you helped participate in previous years. And so now I am on my way to Beverly. <laughs> I'm going to meet with our new Haverhill Idol judge who works at a very prestigious music place. So come with me. I'm Katherine Brown, and I'm the on-air host, our drive time host here at North Shore 104.9, uh, three to seven weekdays. I play music, I have contests, I um, have a couple special features, and this year I'm one of the Haverhill Idol judges. I'm very excited. One of the most important things I have to bring to this competition, you know, aside from, you know, my obvious, you, you know, maturity, there's a certain outlook that I think that I, an experience that I can bring to it. Primarily, I think, I cannot wait to see these kids. I have such a, a clear idea of what these kids are doing when they're up there and what it means you know, to stand in front of a panel of judges. We, we want to come up with two winners, but you, know, you don't want anyone to go away feeling like a loser. 
don't want anyone to go away feeling like their day has been ruined. Somehow, you, you know, I think there's a way to um, to talk to kids after a performance that will be, um, you know, encouraging and still keep it a competition. I'm excited about meeting the other judges. I think that part of um, what's so cool about a competition is that you have the judges that bring different things to you know the competition. Of course, I can't help thinking about American Idol <laughs> and the different personalities. And so that's you, you know that's what it takes. It's it's not one person saying you know this person's the best or that person. It's you know it's 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 what all three of us are able to sort of. Um, you know, come up with together, and we're all bringing very different things to to our you know judging perspective. So I think that'll be a, a cool part of it as well. So is it yeah. safe to say then that you're not going to be a Simon Cowell? I am not going to be the Simon Cowell. <laughs> 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 I wish I almost wish I could be because I thought he was pretty cool, but you know that's not going to be me. I'm not going to send anybody off the stage in tears. Hey, you guys! I'm just putting up the big old April. Idol banner <laughs> down here at HC Media's uh, new Studio 101 location at Harbor Place. Maybe you might have seen it. Um, so yeah, I'm just getting ready for the big day, March 31st and April 14th. So make sure you go online to HavelCommunityTV.org and sign up. We have a lot of kids uh, performing, so I better get uh, going with this banner here. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, I forget how we hang this. <laughs> Register your budding vocalist online at our website, HaverillCommunityTV.org, by clicking on the Haverhill Idol slider on the home page. Auditions are being held over the next three weeks, so don't delay. The ever-growing energy in our city that is seeking new ways to make us bigger and better was expressed in a big way last Monday at Possible Dreams, Team Haverhill's annual community visioning meeting. The NECC Tech Center was filled to capacity with innovative ideas and participants both long time and new gave us their perspective on the evening. Possible Dreams is great because Everybody walks away feeling recharged and there's something happening in the city and you get to see what everybody else is doing. So it's like recharging your batteries every year. <laughs> Possible Dreams is always a wonderful event. Uh, this energizes me all year. This is always a really nice event. Good ideas, people that want to get involved are here and it's nice to see so many people come out. Mid-March in the city means it's once again time for Team Haverhill's annual Possible Dreams. The event drew over 160 people who came to brainstorm, collaborate, and reimagine what Haverhill's future can be. The evening was once again moderated by Team Haverhill's past president, Alice Mann. This is the woman who is responsible for it all, along with, of course, our organization Team Haverhill. So, Alice, tell us a little bit about what went into making this event. Well, a whole lot of people in Team Haverhill who have learned over 10 years how to put this event on. So an incredible amount of behind the scenes work to organize it all. We wanted to do two things this time. We wanted to have a wider range of voices in the room. So the focus groups were a way of broadening the conversation. And um, we also wanted to give more support to moving toward action and not just have uh, pious thoughts, so to speak, about what might be, but to actually encourage people to take at, you know, some small step toward, toward what they want to see. And we're, I think we're trying to teach the community that that's how things happen. Alice is fabulous. I mean, she runs a great meeting and it, it lets people just, you know, think about the community and think about how they would want to interact and improve. So it's a, it's a wonderful event. There were some changes to the familiar format, including the addition of pre-recorded videos that served to help get the conversation started. In addition to the people you meet in this room, you'll see video tonight of residents who participated in five focus groups. We can only bring you these voices with the enormous support we received from HC Media and their awesome staff. 
just would not live anywhere else. And my hat is here. I love April. <laughs> You've heard a lot of great initiatives tonight from different people in the city, from all over different neighborhoods. So what were some of them that stood out to you? I like the idea of getting other people involved, um, reaching out to people to inform them of these things. And there are so many great opportunities to help. And you see it here with the groups of people that were here tonight. Tonight I really appreciated Team Haverhill um, taking an initiative and having people stand up front and claim action items. I really think things were, um, they went better than ever. This is my first time coming to Possible Dreams. Um, I enjoyed it because I have learned different resources that it is in the community that I did not know about. I think it will benefit because um, the community in the neighborhood will actually know what's going on in the town of Haverhill just so informative and it just to be, be able to be able to share all these wonderful ideas with the different groups across Havel. Every event is absolutely wonderful but something about the tweaking of it, setting people up with the videos, the, the video was a wonderful thing what, what um, uh, HC Media did, excellent, made for an absolutely wonderful event and I'm very pleased. Once again, this year's Possible Dreams outing was a great success. Here's looking forward to a positive and productive year ahead for the City of Haverhill and one of its most optimistic and proactive groups, Team Haverhill. Back in 2005, a major community visioning process lifted up goals that some people dubbed impossible dreams. We call this event Possible Dreams, and we're glad you're here tonight. Learn more about Team Haverhill's upcoming projects and initiatives at their website, teamhaverhill.org. Parents of four and five-year-olds will want to attend the Haverhill Public Schools Kindergarten Information Night on Tuesday, March 27th from 6 to 7 p.m. in the Haverhill High School Library. This special event is for parents and guardians of children who will be at least five years old by August 31st, 2018, the minimum age for kindergarten attendance in the 2018-19 school year. Meet kindergarten teachers, receive an overview of programs and services, including special education, food service, and transportation, and find out how to register your kids. Informational packets will be given to everyone in attendance. Parking is at Haverhill High and Lot E around the back of the school. Organizers request the children do not attend the session. Call the School Registration Center to get more information at 978-420-1951. If you have a story or event that you'd like to see featured on the Haverhill Journal, call us at 978-372-8070 or email info at haverhillcommunitytv.org. And don't forget to like us on Facebook or at our HC Media YouTube channel. And that's what's happening in Haverhill the week of March 22nd. I'm Lindsay Paris, and we'll see you next time for our 100th episode. Hey.